Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. A small percentage of my coaching clients aren't clinically depressed, but they are sad, and not just situationally sad, but they've been sad, sober, serious for most of their life. If that describes you or someone you care about, you might find of value this composite exchange. The client says, I'm not just sad because I'm unhappy at work. On reflection, I've always been a sad person. And I ask, well, when did you first think of yourself as a sad person? And the client says, actually only recently. That happened when I didn't get the promotion I thought I deserved. But when I reflected, I realized I've never been happy, even when I've had successes. I have viewed those successes as just an additional worry. Now I've got to be good at my promotion, my marriage, whatever. Well, what do you think is the root cause of your being a sad person? Well, I take after my father. He was always sad, and like me, it comes partly from genes and partly this unrelenting sense of responsibility to work hard, be ethical, kind to everyone. Also, I think I feel good about myself being a serious person. I, I tend to think less of perky, fluffy, too optimistic people. Sounds like you like yourself the way you are. Do you want to accept yourself as is or make any changes? I do like myself this way, but I wonder if I'm paying too much of a price. It would seem that being a happy person is, by definition, a more pleasant way to go through life. The question is, is it okay to mainly cavort through life when you feel that militates against your making the biggest difference you can in your limited time on earth? So I don't know. Maybe I'm open to making little changes, but not fundamental ones. What did you have in mind? Well, are there things that make you happy? I don't know about happy, but for the moment I feel good when I'm eating, uh, especially something I really like, for example, canned peaches or vanilla ice cream, or maybe both together. Well, you're not overweight. Do you want to more often eat your favorites, maybe in small portions so you won't gain weight? I guess. Well, anything else that makes you at least transiently happier? Quilting. It's relaxing, it's meditative, and after I'm done, I have something to give as a gift that's a comforter, literally and figuratively. Anything else makes you happier? Getting my work done, crossing stuff off my to-do list. Well, that sounds like your responsibility thing rather than your pleasure finder kicking in. Yeah. Anything else that could make you happier? I'll go to the well until it runs dry. Mm -hmm. Well, listening to Celine Dion and Barbara Streisand singing, tell him. Well, of course, those are only transient pleasures, all of them. No, no one can fill all of their life or enough of their life with such things to make a person even modestly happy overall. Is there anything more enduring that's worth considering? You're pushing me, so I have to say something. The only thing that comes to mind is more often feel grateful for the good in my life. I think I'm going to quit while I'm ahead, or at least not falling further behind. Okay, <clears throat> so if you or someone you know seems constitutionally sad, might any of what was mentioned be of help? Like transient pleasures, those don't require a personality transplant and yet can sprinkle your sober life with bits of pixie dust. What gives you or that person you care about transient pleasure? More foundational changes? Maybe you really do want to see your glass, maybe the world's glass, is at least half full. So, if that's true, might that become incorporated into your fabric by reminding yourself to try to do that where possible? Maybe by journaling, you know, maybe as shallow as think positive or find the be opt feign optimism. Maybe even with a mantra you'd keep repeating to yourself like that, like feign optimism. F-E-I-G-N. Or acceptance of yourself as is. Maybe even that you view that serious, sober, sad self as a superior way of being. The world probably needs the full range of people, from the hail fellow or gal well met, to who they do a good job of leavening life's stresses, to on the other end of the continuum, the worry ward, who's ever vigilant to what's wrong, how to fix it, and the soberness to devote their whole being to that. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and especially like if you hit the share button below. Share on your social media so that my efforts can have broader impact. And I am flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.